Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We are the Gritty Nurses at the Collision Conference, and we have an amazing guest. We have Hannah Sung in the house. So before, without further ado, I'm going to get Hannah to introduce herself. Hi, Amy and Sarah. It's so nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> as soon as I sat down, it's like, boom, go. Um, <laughs> Well, I'm a journalist, longtime journalist here in Toronto, and uh, I help run a production company uh, with a group of journalists. We're called Media Girlfriends, and we have a podcast. We make podcasts for others. We work in various types of media, and that's what we do. We care a lot about inclusion of perspectives in media. So for those of you who think Hannah might look familiar, she was actually on Much Music back in the day. That's where I remember her from, and we're so happy to have her here today just to talk about, um, you know, healthcare and innovation, but really taking a step back. Um, I really wish Media Girlfriends had been around, or at least that we knew about it, when we started our podcast, because we found that um, podcasting really didn't seem like a space for racialized women. Um, there wasn't a lot of us that we saw doing what we uh, wanted to do. And so I just wanted to thank you so much for, you know, creating this space for us. Um, I also just wanted to know if you had any sort of words of encouragement to folks in a field like podcasting where it's very male dominated and kind of racially non-diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, thanks for the kind words, Sarah. I kind of feel like um, podcasting is this universe where everybody can pick up a mic and and say their thing and so in in one way it can actually be lonely because you may not know other people who are doing that but in another way it's like if you can just find one other show or company that's kind of doing what you want to do like you can treat it like your north star because if you try and take a big picture and and say like oh podcasting and the way that they're um, that many people can get started in podcasting, but it can replicate legacy media in ways certain voices get amplified. Like if you just kind of think about it from that perspective, it can be daunting. Um, but I prefer to think about it in terms of small communities and you just kind of look to the other shows that you're really into, meet a couple of people who are doing similar things and then it can feel very grounding. So, um, I've already forgotten your question. I'm sorry, <laughs> but okay. no, that was that was perfect. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Amy to ask the next question. Yeah, no, I think a lot of what you said resonates with us because we are we started it just to kind of create community. We were both nurses who had a who kind of collaborated. Thank you, yeah. collaborated over a horrible experience. We both um, were bullied. And um, we wanted to talk about mental health and we felt that there was so much silencing. So we built community through just talking about like our own experiences, it was kind of catharsis. And uh, again, these small spaces where, you know, we don't necessarily see ourselves maybe in traditional media, but finding ourselves and our voices and building this small community. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you was about, you know, do you have any role models who are racialized women throughout your career? And do you see yourself as a role model for others? That's a really great question because, you know, I was on Much Music when I was pretty young. I think I got that job when I was 24. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm almost 46, so I feel like those years are hard earned and I love it. I love being my age. When I was younger, a lot of people would write to me. Um, it was actually pre-social media and they would say, you're my role model. And I felt that it was kind of, it was amazing, but it was a little bit, um, I felt pressure and I felt like I wasn't even deserving because I felt young and I was still figuring myself out. But now if anybody says that to me, I see it much more as like a lateral thing. Like you can have a role model who's your friend, you know, and who is at the same age or at the same kind of stage of life. and. I mean, if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be getting through, you know what I mean? So I try not to feel pressure if anybody ever says that to me now. I say, okay, cool, we can be that for each other. Um, yeah, and do I have any role models? I mean, I just think that anybody who does journalism and can make a living, and then also as an entrepreneur, um, that's incredible. If you care a lot about doing the work slightly differently uh, in a trauma-informed way, and if you care about having an intersectional lens and I'm I'm down you know I love all of that I, I think that it's not easy work so um, you know Connie Walker somebody my age 
total role model. She's incredible. Um, her latest podcast won a Pulitzer. Actually, I don't need to tell you she's amazing. Everybody knows she's amazing. Uh, it's called Stolen, uh, St. Michael. So you can listen to that if you haven't already. Um, but you know, today is the day after the um, mayoral by-election in Toronto. And Olivia Chow won. Olivia, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so interesting. Yesterday, I was, as I was watching the news, I said to one of my children, this is the first time there's a, a politician where mommy feels like this person looks like me. And, you know, and then this morning, uh, I don't know if it sunk in for him, uh, but I, I hope he hears me. And things are changing, so it's cool. And then this morning, I woke up to a picture on Twitter of her riding her bike, and I was like, wow, she really looks like me. Or I really look like her, like, cool, you know? And that really matters, you know? It's not just about looks, it's about values, but it's about seeing yourself in the world around you, which I did not have when I was younger. So I feel very excited and energized by the world today of media, the internet, you know, all the different ways in which people such as yourselves can tell your stories and then other people can connect. And it doesn't have to be about massive numbers or virality. I love that you can just find your people online. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so amazing. We, we talk so much about the, the importance of representation, right? Seeing yourself in that space. And I think I, I really do feel hopeful that we are starting to move towards a more inclusive and understanding space. And I think that, you know, the, it may seem like a small step, but it's, it makes such a huge impact to, to say to your child, just like you did this morning, hey, like, look, our mayor looks like us. I think it's so important. And just that he might say, hey, you know what, that's something I could do too. I think that's just, those are those important moments that we we want to see. And I'm so glad that, you know, we talked a little bit about representation. But I'm going to pass it to Sarah because I think she's got one more question for you. Yeah, so it's interesting that we talk about people that look like us, that represent us. And I think that even coming to Collision for the very first time, it is much more diverse than I thought it would be. So that was a nice surprise for me. And um, I know that you're doing a talk uh, at this conference. So do you have any specific goals for Collision and being here? Um, it's also my first time. Oh, and oh, it's, oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's overwhelming when you walk in, right? Yeah. It's a lot happening, a lot of people. Um, I mean, honestly, my goal was to just check it out. And so I was very happy to moderate this talk that's happening about tech equity, uh, racial um, justice through and, and wealth building through the work of a couple of people on this panel who seem really cool. I'm going to meet them for the first time today. Uh, one person is the CEO of the Black Innovation Alliance. They're about supporting black entrepreneurs. And then another person works for Airbnb, and she's going to talk about all the things that they have done internally to serve the people who use Airbnb, um, who experience racial discrimination, and you know how to how to fix that in terms of their system. So, I want to learn from them. You know, I'm there to just ask the questions, which is the position I love being in. Rather than I like answering questions too, but when I ask a question that really scratches my itch of like I just want to hear from people and learn from them. So, yeah, can I ask you a question? 100%. How has making your podcast? Um, affected or like your mental health because you that's what kind of prompted you to make it has it has it been a good journey so far you want to start um, I think, like Amy said, the reason we started the podcast was because we experienced bullying, incivility, gaslighting on the job, and we tried to bring our concerns to leadership and they wouldn't listen to us. So we decided to create our own platform. And for me, it was like therapy, being able to have that space to really share what happened to me and kind of reflect upon how it really affected me and my mental health. So I think that now... Um, knowing that I was able to share that story and hearing from other nurses that went through similar things and how our uh, podcast has helped them really makes me appreciate the opportunity that I've been given to be a podcaster. And, you know, anyone can pick up a mic, but I think it takes skill to be able to bring these stories to light and really connect with our listeners. So I do think it's affected my mental health in a positive way and that it can, can, I can continue to use this podcast to... Uh, help me overcome any other challenges I might have um, mentally. And, you know, I think it's just a great opportunity that we've been given. So I'm going to pass it over to Amy now. Yeah, thank you so much, Hannah, for that question. And uh, I'm trying not to get the waterworks going, but I, I think that, you know, this is a safe space for me. 
And I think this is where a lot of people are searching for safe spaces, whether it's their workplace or in their homes. And I find that the, the podcast is a safe space and we didn't have that. So when we were in the situation where we were feeling bullied and silenced, we didn't have a, we didn't have anybody to have those conversations with other than us. So the podcast has been our safe place and I'm trying not to cry, but it's been like, uh, I don't know where we would have been if we didn't say, Hey, you know, we need to talk about what's happening here in healthcare. We need to talk about the things we're seeing. And, um, it really provided our own platform provided that safe space. And then it also created a safe space for other people to come and say, Hey, me too. So, um, thank you for that question. And yeah, that's why we do what we do. Incredible. I'm giving it back oh to you. <laughs> no. Well, I just also want to say like finding a safe space or making a safer space on the internet is not easy. No, it no, feels no, next no. to impossible. Yeah. So yeah. like kudos to both of you. That's incredible. Well, thank you so much, Hannah, for coming and talking to us today. I'm sure this will not be the last conversation. We definitely have to get you on our official podcast. But thank you so much. And I hope we're going to join you on your talk. And I'll hand it over to Sarah to finish off. Um, where can people find you if they want to connect with you or Media Girlfriends or any of that? Yeah. Well, you can go to our site, MediaGirlfriends.com. We're on like uh, all the socials, like Twitter, if anybody's still on there, um, Instagram, uh, Media GFS on on Twitter, and the Media Girlfriends at Instagram. And then I personally have those things as well, just my name, Hannah Sung, uh, or on Instagram, H-A-N-N-S-U-N-G. I was late to Instagram, so I didn't get my own name. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for having me. Okay. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.